Doesn't that speak the truth? What a coincidence. The shot. All of a sudden, the yelling stops. Assistant State Attorney Bernie de Lirionda delivering the prosecution's closing arguments. The burden of proof is on the state. But did he make the case in Law and Disorder tonight? I want to bring in Richard Gabriel, a high-profile jury consultant who worked on the O.J. Simpson and Casey Anthony trials. Judge Glenda Hatchett, the host of The Judge Hatchett Show. Defense Attorney Jane Weintraub and Mark Lamont Hill, who's a HuffPost Live host and Columbia University press. A very eminent panel, I must say. Let me start with you, Richard Gabriel, if I may. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow? We're going to have, obviously, the defense and then and the prosecution will rebut. Do you think the jury will be out by tomorrow afternoon? And if so, how long will they be out for? Well, it's, it's always hard to say. It is like reading tea leaves a little bit. But I, I would guess that we're going to hear Mark in the morning. We're going to get to the rebuttal probably uh, in the morning, maybe early afternoon. They're going to get charged. They're probably not going to get little more than an hour or so in the afternoon, and they'll probably start fresh in on Saturday. Now, remember, they're going to be probably be deliberating over the weekend, and I think this jury is going to really take their time because they realize the world is watching. Uh, typically, as we've seen in some of the other cases, a short verdict typically is a pretty good one for the defense. It means they don't feel the prosecution's met their burden. But I think we're looking at early next week for before a verdict. I mean, Mark Lamont Hill, I, I actually think it's a bit of a red herring, the, you know, the screaming stopping. I mean, I would imagine that the cries for help would stop whoever was crying at the moment that the gun is fired, whether you think it was Trayvon Martin or George Zimmerman. But what I think could really affect the deliberation time for a jury may well be this question of whether to acquit him under self-defence or whether they should convict him of manslaughter. I think most people think that the murder charge is probably now no longer a likely option. Absolutely. The murder charge is out of reach. A year ago, I very publicly said I didn't think second degree was doable based on what we thought the facts were. The prosecution has improved second degree, but I think manslaughter is very much on the table. Although it was somewhat pro forma today, it was still a major victory for a prosecution team that was in need of a major uh, victory. I think they've made the case. My only concern is that today, when the prosecution made this compelling, uh, emotion-filled argument, I think it may have hit the jurors in the heart. But when they go back and deliberate, they're going to return to their heads, and they may ask the question, did the prosecution present a clear, coherent theory of what happened? I'm not sure they did. Well, that, that is a problem, isn't it, Judge Glenda, about, uh, as, as your eminent judge Leslie said earlier, is that have they really established what they think happened as the and prosecution? I, and I agree. Um, I do not believe they have uh, met the burden of proof. And that really is very difficult because you have a defendant who has been very been very articulate about what happened. And of course, Trayvon is not here to tell us part of the story. But I do think that there is a very likely possibility that the jury may come back with um, a conviction on the manslaughter charge. And so I think that the prosecution couldn't abandon second degree in their argument today, and I think they were wise not to, and I think they had to be very tenacious and very passionate on that, and I respect the fact that they did that today. Jay Wancho, I want to play you a clip from Bernie de Lirionda where he was highlighting the inconsistencies in George Zimmerman's testimony. He originally told the police over and over, before and even after this interview, he didn't know the name of the street. And then when they just kind of let him talk, he gives the name right there. I mean, it's common sense. There's only three streets, and he's lived there four years. Again, why did he have to lie about that? Because he does not want to admit that he was following this innocent young boy. You see, Jane, this is what I also come back to. I find it pretty implausible that a neighborhood watch official who's been on patrol operating there for several years and there are three street names, he has to get out of a car to check which one it is? How likely is that? Well, I think that he was turned around. I think that he wasn't exactly sure where he was at that moment because he was following Trayvon. I mean, look, Pierce, the reality of the closing argument today was strictly appealing for sympathy and emotion. And Bernie knows better than that because he knows in Florida that the judge tomorrow afternoon is going to read to this jury that they shall not base their verdict on sympathy or feeling sorry for anybody in that courtroom. They must base their verdict on the evidence that they hear in the courtroom and the exhibits that have been admitted and the instructions by her honor. And she will tell the jury 
failure to do so and base their verdict on the law and the evidence only will result in a miscarriage of justice. Yep. A miscarriage of justice. They are not to base their verdict on sympathy and emotions. And that's all the okay. prosecutor did today. Uh, uh, Judge Glenda, you want to jump yeah, in? Yeah, but they're still well, no, human I, beings. Well, I, I disagree with that. I mean, I absolutely agree that that's how they're going to be charged, and that's exactly <coughs> what the standard right. should be. But I think that he had to go there, and I don't think that it is unreasonable. Because he didn't have anything else. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. You talk about the language on the tape of the comments that he made. I mean, there really is, and I don't know that he'll be able to meet that threshold, but there is there is evidence that there may be possibilities of malice and intent and just the whole pattern of what happened. And so I think that he did exactly what he had to do today. And so I disagree with that. Okay, but Mark Lamont Hill, I mean, there is one uh, crucial bit of incontrovertible evidence, and that is that Trayvon Martin was shot dead. And we now know he right. was a completely unarmed 17-year-old boy. And that in itself, if I'm a juror, has got to be hugely significant, regardless of anything else. No, that's absolutely true. I mean, the reality here is that where they're not allowed to make a decision purely based on emotion, they have to base it on the evidence. But, but we're human beings and we're not impervious to this stuff. So what happens is, even as you're objectively analyzing evidence, uh, your emotion and, and, and your heartstrings are being tugged at by the prosecution in a way that might make, inform your decision making. Because at some point, you're going to have to say, what was George Zimmerman attempting to do? Do I trust George Zimmerman's testimony? Do I trust that George Zimmerman was doing what he said he, he, he was doing? Ultimately, that emotional tug at our hearts may play into that. At the end of the day, as Judge Hatchett said, only two people know what happened, Zimmerman right. and Trayvon, and Zimmerman killed you Trayvon. You don't have to so, use so, George Zimmerman's words, but, but Mark. Pierce. You can ignore okay, all of his okay. statements. Okay, let's, let's oh. just take a short... But, but let's take it. Wait, no, let's, not, wait, wait, wait. Let's take a short <sighs> break. We have to take a short break. We'll be back with you all. You're all staying. So let's just keep the powder dry until we come back after this break. I'm going to ask one question. What does Mark O'Mara need to do in his closing defence argument tomorrow? Why does this defendant get out of the car if he thinks that Trayvon Martin is a threat to him? Why? Why? Because he's got a gun. He's got the equalizer. He's going to take care of it. He's a wannabe cop. Explosive moment, Assistant State Attorney Bernie de la Rionda delivers the prosecution's closing arguments in the George Zimmer murder trial. I'm back with my all-star panel. So I'm going to read out a tweet here. If you've got a, a view on this, by the way, tweet me at Piers Morgan with your view, and we may read out your tweet. This one's from Isabella Daza. She's a, a very famous Filipina actress and entertainer. She says what I think many people are thinking. Following the George Zimmerman trial on the Piers Morgan show, I'm so confused. The arguments are all very compelling. And, and Jane Weintraub, that, that really cuts to this. This trial, doesn't it? it the does. arguments are very compelling on both sides. Very, very difficult, I think, for these jurors, and I hope they do take time to really think this through because it's an important decision. It is. It, it, it is important, and the issue that has to be brought home, Pierce, two things. One, not guilty does not mean he was proven innocent. Not guilty means the state has not proven its case beyond a reasonable right. doubt, our standard in this country. And that's very important. It does not mean innocent. And number two, I mean, the prosecutor today, with all his theatrics, he ended his closing argument talking about, and there was no DNA. And he, of all people, knows DNA. Trayvon Martin had a closed fist and was punching George Zimmerman, which is the nose being broken, as was indicated on the record by eyewitnesses, not George Zimmerman's self-serving statements, by witnesses. And there's no, with a closed fist, there's no way to get DNA under the fingers. Bernie knows better, and yet that's his best argument at the end. He went well, out with a whimper. Well, but he also talked about covering his mouth, and that's George's testimony, that his mouth was covered, and that Trayvon had covered his mouth. And so the question is, why don't we see some DNA on the sleeve? Why don't we see it on his hand? Um, I do Dr. agree Dr. Exactly. DeMaio answered that. Dr. Well, DeMaio, not rebutted, answered that question very clearly. Remember, he said, because Trayvon Martin at that time was on top and he took his jacket. That's why the gunshot was two to four inches away, because there wasn't a contact wound. There was stippling. Remember, I understand and that's about the contact else wound. But see, this is the problem, Pierce. That's why there's no blood. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this, this is exactly the I mean, problem, right? Everything is compelling. And the problem is when everything is compelling, that's, that, that's reasonable doubt. Uh, you and know, there is. The pro if, we're, if, mm -hmm. if, if the prosecution left a closing and we're still saying, well, the defense has a compelling argument and they haven't even spoken yet, that's not a good sign for the prosecution. 
Right. Okay, let me bring in but, Richard but Gable. Because Richard Gable, you're a, a jury expert. This jury, they have the weight of the world shoulders watching here. It's not just any old trial. It's a trial leading all the news bulletins in America now, network and cable. This is the biggest deal they're ever going to have to face. What are they thinking tonight? What do you think their, their thinking will be over the next couple of days? Well, the, the truth is that verdicts are rarely just about evidence or the law. They're about human judgment. And both of the attorneys yes. have to sit there and say, here's my juror. I've got a nursing assistant with eight, eight kids. I've got a safety officer. I've got a, a woman whose husband is a space attorney who used to carry a conceal and carry weapon, but let it lapse. These are the people that we have to talk mm -hmm. to. This is the judgment that has to be made. It's what they think of it. It's likely that their, their judgment has already been made, and they and their views may have even been formed even before this case started. Uh, and let me ask but you, Richard, let me ask you this. In your experience of juries, are women likely to be tougher in a situation like this than men, or not as tough as men? Oh, it, it, it depends on the woman and it depends on the situation. The truth is everybody kept saying, well, here's the women that, and they're going to be more sympathetic to Trayvon Martin. And the truth is that it depends on their life experiences. Mm -hmm. And what I look to is in jury selection, you've got a woman who, who was reporting vandals. You've got another woman who's got eight kids and who, uh, a, a woman who is involved in pet rescue and loves saving animals. Those are the types of personality issues that really do drive this decision and not necessarily necessarily their gender. The real question is how are these jurors going to get along? Because it depends, mm. largely this verdict is going to depend on whether this is a consensus jury. They're going to get along and come to an agreement on either a murder charge or a manslaughter or an acquittal, or they're going to split because they're not going to agree on anything and then you end up in hung jury. Okay, territory. well I'm going to make you all my jury right now and I want a one word answer, which means one word, not the normal endless speeches that people give when I ask that question. <laughs> I want to know whether you think he should be acquitted found guilty of manslaughter, which the answer is manslaughter, or a second-degree murder. Let me start with you, Mark Lamont Hill. Ooh, this is based on, this is based on the, the, pre the presentation of the prosecution? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, not guilty. Not guilty. Okay. Let me go to you, Richard Gabriel. I think he did it. I think he did it, but not, not no, being no. based well, on the No, no. That's a very honest guilty. answer. Richard Gabriel. I, I'm just thinking about the jury, and I'm thinking they're heading toward a manslaughter because they, they don't have the motive, or they have enough motive to give them their state of mind of George Zimmerman, but they don't have enough to really give them that, that sort of depraved mindset for a second degree. Judge Glenda? I think it's going to be manslaughter, given the totality of the situation. I think it'll be manslaughter. Jane Weintraub? Not guilty. Wow. Two not guilties. Two Mansfield. It's going to be a very, very. We're hung, Piers. It's another. It's a hung jury. It's a hung, it's a hung jury, too. and you know what? I think I think that probably sums up how America's <laughs> feeling right now. It's a complicated case, and it could go any of three ways. Thank you all very much indeed for joining me. Shockwaves from the Trayvon Martin case have reached across the country and indeed the world.